Hey everybody, it's Jason again with JR Custom Designs. Um, since I've been sharing ideas, I got a, another one I wanted to share with you guys. I don't know if Boss Boss told you guys about this, um, but when I first got the machine, like most of you, it uses a two in, two and a half inch lens. Um, the clearance on the head, especially if you have something raised that you're trying to go around or inside of, is almost impossible. Um, without hitting the uh, the object that's in the way so if you look at your nozzle and I'll show you here in a second but if you look at your nozzle there's there's two threaded parts to your nozzle inside um, <clears throat> your lens housing whatever you want to call it um, typically they when they when they get it to you from the factory the uh, the lens is on the top part of that threaded area and uh, it doesn't allow for very much clearance. I'll kind of show you. Here's about roughly the clearance you get with the standard setup. Um, and then I'll, I'll auto focus or auto um, focus and show you kind of where I'm at. Because with this, I get about 17 and a half millimeters of clearance with a two inch lens, two and a half inch lens, which typically gives you. It's a uh, 17.2 is the clearance I have. Vice, I think the uh, five or six that you have with with the, the stock setup. Um, so I mean, it gives you plenty plenty of clearance. With your head, use the short cone, um, and I'll kind of show you real quick, break it down, and show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and lower the bed. So, you disconnect your head just like you would normally. I must have got super glue on it or something. <laughs> Alright. Why well, that's so tough. There we go. Alright. Alright, so here's your nozzle. You see the top part? That's where the, the lens is typically at when they get it, when you get it from uh, Boss, which gives you the shorter clearance. And if you see down in there, that's my lens. So you take off the cone. <clears throat> and then look down the side, there's another threaded ring in there, or another threaded body. Just take your cone or your lens and take it from the top, which is here, put it on the bottom, and that'll give you your extra clearance. Um, this will work with any of the lenses. <clears throat> it especially comes in handy when you're trying to do a, a, a one or one and a half inch lens because the, the clearance on that is very, very minimal. And uh, this helps out tremendously with that. That way you can accomplish using that lens. Um, like I said, I don't know if Boss told any of you guys that, but uh, I did some research, talked to them when I first got it, and I found out about it. Um, so it's pretty. It's, I mean, it's easy to do the same thing. You want the uh, the bevel up or the cone shape of the lens up, and the dish or concave portion facing down, just like normal. Um, the air is the same, nothing, nothing else changes. And then if you're using a 4 inch lens, um, typically I'll put it on top because I don't want to be too far away from the material. But if you want to be far enough away to where you're not getting any smoke up in the lens, especially when you're engraving, because um, I use a 4 inch lens, believe it or not, to engrave quite a bit, unless I'm doing a picture or something like that, um, then obviously I'll use a um, either my two inch meniscus lens or the inch and a half lens to do photos and, and, and such like that. Um, and also this, this works just fine for cutting. I use it this way for cutting as well um, with a two inch, uh, two and a half, sorry. Um, but yeah. So that's just a little bit of information. I don't know if anybody else is, is aware of that or has done that. 
um, but it helps tremendously because I found myself doing uh, kitchen cabinet doors, um, picture frames that people already have, not picture frames, but um, wooden frames with uh, sorry, wooden frames around something, um, which makes it really hard to get in there. And this helps out a lot. And you just put it back on, put everything back together, and you're ready to go. Also, um, it's not advised to do it at your own risk, but um, your magnetic switch there, sometimes I'll run it with the lid open. It's not recommended, um, but sometimes I like to see what's going on. And I have down here, it's my, my magnet. So when I'm ready to use it again, I take my magnet, lay it across the switch, and you're good to go. And then when you're working on the machine, just take the magnet off so you don't have a chance of it firing on you. Um, but again, do that at your own risk. Just a little, another little bypass or trick that you can, you can do to work with your machine. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. If you have any questions, let me know. You guys take it easy.